Hi everyone, JD from Fox Focus. A little while ago I did an overview of a circuit board that I was designing. The circuit boards have uh, finally come in, so uh, this is one of them. And so it's a USB to uh, four serial port uh, converter, so, um, sorry I'm doing this backwards. Uh, the USB uh, B connector there, and uh, one, two, three, four serial ports, and uh, some Dinkle connectors as an alternative to the DB9 connector. Uh, the uh, TTL to RS-232 uh, level converters and this is the FT4232H. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm going to put two together. I was talking the other day about uh, not having felt like I'd done much during March. Uh, today's the 28th or the 29th so uh, I've still got a couple of days to complete these and say that I uh, did something during March. Here we go. Okay, so I've now got uh, two of these boards uh, loaded. I haven't turned them on yet, uh, but there's the finished product as far as components being loaded on. And that's what the back of the circuit board looks like. Okay, well the next thing is to uh, load the drivers and uh, plug it in and see what it does. Okay, so the board's connected, and I've got a cable here which is a loop back between transmit and receive. Uh, so I've got uh, hyper terminal open, and we'll go to COM10, which will be the A port, and I'll type some characters on the keyboard, and you can see there the um, up here the um, transmit and receive LEDs are blinking. And if I take that out and swap over to COM11, which is the B port, plug that back in, and the transmit and receive LEDs are blinking on that one. Into the C port, and we'll swap hyper terminal over to COM12. And you can see transmit, receive, LEDs blinking there. And finally, the D port over to 13. And transmit, receive, LEDs blinking. So that's all working, that's good. I've got an EEPROM on here so I can change some of the configuration of the uh, FT4232H so I'll go do that. Uh, this utility is called FTPROG, it's from FTDI. The last time I used this program it was called I think MPROG 
and uh, that was probably four or more years ago. Uh, one, of, one of the first circuit boards I ever made uh, was a two-port serial uh, USB to serial converter uh, using the FTDI chip as well. So um, if I scan for the device that's connected, and there it is, and in fact, um, in fact I've already programmed this one, um, and one of the things that I changed was, uh, yes, the config descriptor. I've changed the um, changed the milliamps uh, that the board's allowed to use uh, to a little bit higher than the default, and I've also just changed the product description that comes pops up when the device is uh, first plugged in. Uh, just added that. I don't think there was really anything else that uh, anything else that I changed. Uh, you can change uh, the the chip has several different functions, and you can change um, the behavior. For instance, uh, the ring indicator pin can be used for um, transmit enable for RS four eighty five. And so you can change you can change that. You can save it as a template, and uh, if you're doing production runs of these, you can um, use that template to load. Uh, all your devices, and just to just to show this going, I'll erase. So now, now the EEPROM is erased, and uh, everything's gone back to the defaults. Uh, the chip has recognised that the EEPROM is blank, and it's just using the defaults. And now I'll uh, open uh, my template, which will have. Oh, have things like my product description and here in if I right click on the device here if I apply that template and then program and the EEPROM's programmed again and now I'll have to delete the device from uh, device manager and plug it back in again